So welcome everybody. I'm Cindy Myers. Uh, <clears throat> and if you're interested in getting in touch with me, you can go to my website at Your Energy Healer. So tonight's topic is going to be kind of a review. It's going to be on frequently asked questions. Because I think, uh, you know, <laughs> if they're frequently asked, then it's, and it's of interest to most people because obviously uh, it's a common problem that they're seeing in their pets. So go, we'll go over that. And then I'm saving plenty of time for demos at the end. But before we get going, if you are having a medical emergency with your pet, please call your veterinarian. But what I can do is help clear any trapped emotions, rebalance their energy, clear, cleanse the chakras, which supports their natural healing abilities um, to work alongside with your vet. And it also can often help calm them down if they're stressed out and anxious, it can help calm you down. And if you have an aggressive animal, I do insist that you also work with a certified trainer, qualified animal trainer. Uh, it's really important. We'll cover that a little bit more in the topics. With that, um, we'll just get going and maybe weave in a little bit more about me through the topic. So, so frequently asked questions, especially about anxiety. It's it was such a common problem for ourselves, but also in our pets, we tend to pick up animals that share some of our emotional issues, actually. And so by helping them, we quite often can help ourselves as well. So one of the um, big questions I get is, how can I tell if my dog or cat doesn't feel well? But I, I can tell something's wrong, but I just, I don't know what they're trying to, you know, that I can't tell what they're saying. You know, you can just tell they're off. Um, they're not doing their normal behavior. Maybe they're not eating as well uh, or drinking. They just kind of look lethargic and they look at me like fix it, but I don't know what to do to fix it. So that's a very common question, uh, question I get. As a matter of fact, I got it just the other day. <laughs> and of course, if you're not sure, it's always good to call your vet. Um, but what I did in this case, it was somebody's cat that they just wasn't acting right. Uh, I was laying around a lot in, on their couch and just not eating well, um, doing its kitty business pretty well, but just very lethargic. And so I tried clearing some trapped emotions off of it and it had some, and it would kind of perk up for a little bit, but then get kind of slogged down again and very lethargic. So I checked in a couple of times with them, with the cat. And then what, you know what, we definitely need to get this, this cat to a vet because it, the energy is off. And this is when, if the clearings don't help pretty quickly, then that's a good, also a good time to bring in a, your vet because there's something else medically going on. And sure enough, it had a, an infection of some sort and it needed an, the antibiotics. So we needed the, the combo. And, and, and then the energy work helped get, it, get the cat back on. And where the energy work really helped the kitty was because it was so freaked out for going to the vet, poor thing. It was super, super anxious. So clearing that anxiety after it went to the vet was very beneficial because it settled down and because it's of course, thing she hid for quite a few hours but clearing it kind of helped get rid of that those trapped emotions from the trauma of going to the vet and then it was able she was able to allow her body to heal and that's one thing with cats in particular if you give their bodies the chance to heal they're very good at healing and so uh, it rebounded very very quickly between the two things that was done for her so that's one thing we can do and where I check in and then again, a good example of, again, the team approach of working energetically with your pet, as well as working with a vet. Uh, but sometimes, you know, I get a question and the animal is off and I just clear the trapped emotions and that's all it needs. Um, uh, but again, that's where we, I like to work closely. It's a team approach, not only with the vet, but with you, you're the observer. You're the one seeing, are there any changes? Are there any, is there some improvement? And in this case, the cat improved a little bit, but then it would slide back. It would improve and slide back. So that's when, okay, we need a little bit more than just the energy work. We need the vet to come in and then add in the medication. <clears throat> um, 
but a lot of times the energy work is all that's needed and they're back to the normal self very quickly. So the other, another one is potty issues. That's a very common thing. And there's usually, uh, especially again for cats, but also true for dogs. If they're very good about you doing their, their little business in the appropriate places and subtly not, uh, it can mean there's something physical going on. And although it's not 100% accurate. I find that a lot of times if they're going just outside the litter box, that's quite often there's something medically going on. It's not just a, a behavioral issue. And so um, if they're going right outside, the, like they're trying to get into the litter box, but they're missing or they just don't quite make it, that's quite often a sign of something medically going on. Sometimes just the clearings help get again get rid of the trapped emotions and their natural healing abilities take over and it's sufficient. But a lot of times that is too another time when we want to do the combo of clearing their trapped emotions and bringing in a vet. If they're, and then the other time, again, in general speaking terms, if they're doing their business out, well outside the litter box, like in your shoe, <laughs> In, in very inappropriate places. And they try and sometimes make it kind of obvious, you know, it's like, hey, <laughs> where, where it's not hidden. Um, then that's sometimes a sign that they've got something bothering them more emotionally. And so that's it. But, and you may not understand why the heck is wrong with this. What, why, why would they be missed? Nothing to you, maybe nothing has changed. So I go in, I tr move the, so those trapped emotions that are creating the behavior, and then I try and get a clue from them of what's going on. And a lot of times what's going on in the household, it might be that we're, you know, the person is very anxious, has been very stressed out. Your animal can pick that up and it can be very confusing if there's an energy change in the household. They're very quite, most animals are quite tuned into our energy. And if they're, even if they're not tuned into our energy necessarily, they are tuned into their normal habitat, their normal energy of what's, what they're used to in the household and what used to in their, in your family dynamics. And if there's a change, that's what they're picking up uh, a lot of times. So any change can be unsettling to them. They don't understand why is this different? They don't understand that maybe you having a deadline at work and you're kind of stressed out because there's so much to get done. Or <laughs> right now, kids are going back to school. That's a big change. And you know, where's my playmates? Where are the kids? Uh, why are they not here anymore? Or you're just getting into that new routine of having to get rest and get the kids out the door. All those things, that's a change in what they got gotten used to and they don't understand it. So that confusion level plus the change in energy in the household can go, can be just too much. And they, one way that they can communicate that oh, this is different. I don't understand what's going on. I need help to understand what the heck is going on and I don't like it. <laughs> and so they have an accident outside the, their litter box or they poop in the house. If it's a dog, they might you know, have an accident in, inside the house when, they're very, when they've been potty trained for a long period of time. So, so those are indicators quite often that it's not always just a medical issue. It can be a behavioral one. And that's something that we can work on. Uh, and clear up and explain to them. That's where in my intuitive, not only clearing the trapped emotions, but communicating to them what the heck's going on. <laughs> and then they go, oh, okay. They may not like it, but at least they understand it. And then unfortunately, another big question I get is helping people and um, guiding them in that end of life process. So, um, and that's always an individual thing. Uh, I don't tell them now is the time, but I can help them un understand what their pet is experiencing and help guide them in, in, in supporting the person in making that decision if it's time to let their beloved pet cross over. So those are just kind of samples of what I, I uh, um, a lot of the questions I get in. Another one that I'm getting quite a bit right now are people are doing their end of summer vacations. And so their pets are being left either at home with a sitter or going to boarding. And that too is very anxiety provoking in the change in, in what's going on and they get very confused. 
So uh, that's when people do like to hire me for that during that period to check in on their pet, clear any trapped emotions, explain that, that you're coming back. And I can tell them, depending on how long you're going, you're gone for, I'll, I'll give them how many nighttime sleeps. And that just can, by clearing those trapped emotions, really help. Um, a good example too with that was um, uh, uh, somebody went on vacation and, and had a cat uh, or has a cat and um, it was growling at the sitter and, and swatting at her. And so, um, she asked if there was anything I could do to help with that situation. So when I tapped into the cat, it, it said that um, it, it blamed the person. She it thought the person had taken <laughs> her, her person away. So she was holding the sitter responsible for, uh, for, for leaving. <laughs> and so when I realized that, when we, I was able to let it know that that was not true and that your person had was that was their idea to go and that the person coming in to take care of it was you know wanting to be there to help take care of it and it was not responsible for and or the reason why your person was gone and so then it went oh okay <laughs> and then and now they're best buddies it was really wonderful getting that feedback that that they really bonded and 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 are getting along wonderfully so so that is another example of an, an a common issue maybe not not that reason for having problem with the, the sitter but they do have anxiety a lot of anxiety when we go out of town uh, so we want to help with that process because that can also lead usually within a two to well, I would say 24 hours up to maybe a week or two, um, you might get uh, an issue, the potty issue, or something may show up up to almost two weeks after you return home from a trip. So it may not be immediate, and that would be like, oh, two weeks later, and you, you know, everything's been fine for two weeks, while all of a sudden, would my pet suddenly have issues? You, you wouldn't put two and two together necessarily, but it can build up. And that's because of, um, I'm gonna go right to this era, this topic, the threshold. So our pets and, and ourselves, when emotions, we can handle so many emotions in a, in a day and burn them off. They're just chemicals that our body creates to having an, an experience that we're having, a memory or thought. And, and so we can have thousands, you know, about 30,000, I read not too long ago, uh, emotions a day. And so we have, that's a lot of chemicals that we have to then process and burn off and build, you know, otherwise they get stuck in our body and they trap. Now we can handle quite a bit of trapped emotions in our body and not ha have any impact. And that's true for our pets. They can handle a, plenty of trapped emotions quite often, but there's a threshold. And when it, and when it exceeds that threshold, when we build up too many trapped emotions and it goes past that threshold of what we can tolerate, that's when the potty issues come up. That's when some of these issues really start showing up. Um, the physical ones and or behavioral ones can start to rise. And so that's when we need to really work on clearing because we definitely want those trapped emotions to get below that threshold and not just below because any little stress can just pop us right over. So we wanna get it below that threshold and give ourselves some padding. So then there's room to handle certain stresses because we all have stress throughout the day uh, or through our life and, and our pets can have different energy and we don't want them to have to constantly go over that threshold. Um, and I do want to mention about um, aggression when I first started the caveat that you need to work with a trainer. <clears throat> that threshold is why we're really key to that. So when you have an aggressive animal, it's again, that fight or flight response system is very reactionary. And in that case, for the aggressive animal, their reaction is, is, is fight, you know, they, they become aggressive. And so when they exceed that threshold, they snap and they bite or they attempt to bite or they growl. So, so um, again, I can clear those trapped emotions, get them below and they're more calm, 
But if there's a stress in the household, you know, we can give you that padding, but it slowly builds up and slowly builds up. And if we haven't modified the behavior, once it goes through that threshold again, that's going to be their go-to reaction. So that's why it's really important to also work with the trainer is because when I clear those trapped emotions, we also need to tell it how to behave in a different way so that when it does get stressed, it does something different than react and be reactive and aggressive. So that's why we need to do it as a team approach and not a certified dog trainer. And you really need somebody there in with you in the moment that can show you exactly what, 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 what signs they may be giving ahead of time. And they can also show you what you can do instead in the moment, as opposed to me over the phone. That's just not very effective. And I'm not a certified dog trainer so it's or, or animal trainer. So working with somebody that really knows there's that part of it is really important. And again, I like being in a team because it's also important then to get rid of the trapped emotions and then train the, the pet on how, how it's a better way to behave. So here are some things, though, that you can do. And the first thing I always tell every, every webinar, whether it's for us humans or animals, is to breathe. Okay, that's the number one thing to do. It really helps calm your heart rate down. It slows down. It just calms you down. It just, and it triggers your calming system. So by breathing our pets, again, we're like, we are like mini radars. And by radiating that calm, calmer energy out, that will help your pet tremendously. Uh, if you're matching their anxiety because you're worried about them, they're gonna sense that, that anxiety. Why would they believe you when you say, oh, it's okay, it's okay. If you're saying, <laughs> if your heart rate's saying, oh, this is something scary and worry. I'm so worried about. It. So we need to calm ourselves down in order to help them. Also, if you need to be in your thinking brain, then breathing and, and calming yourself down allows you to access your bigger thinking brain instead of your lizard brain. So breathe. First thing is to breathe. And then what I'd like to suggest too, just, just for your own benefit or to, if you have a more stressed out pet, is to, uh, I'm, I called it... Um, I coined it today is tune out and tune in. So tune, turn everything off for a second. Turn, turn your TV off, walk away from your computer and your, your cell phone, all your devices, and just spend two to five minutes with your pet. And just use your breathing and picturing sending love to them, maybe doing some gentle petting, all of that, if you just do that quiet energy, one is so beneficial to you. Uh, it, it is, I call it my anti-anxiety, antidepressant medication, doing that for myself. It's, it's so effective in calming myself down. But again, it's mutually effective and it becomes a positive feedback loop versus a negative feedback loop. That win-win, it's a total win-win because our love for them is they're soaking it up as well so it can help really calm your pet down if they have anxiety if you have a new animal especially one that is a rescue animal it will help with the bond if even if you have a strong bond with your pet it'll just become stronger spending that two to five minutes with them and then uh, do try this at home this uh, i i saw i can't believe i only heard about this or thought of doing this uh, just recently but um they should, I saw a clip of people kissing their their pets on the top of their head and watching their reaction, like not over and over, just one time, and it was just the sweetest thing you ever did see. Was these pets just melting and responding, out, totally responding, uh, either kiss, giving a lick back, or a hug, or cuddle in, uh, direct eye contact, but with soft eyes that just go, "I love you." You know, and, and so I started doing that with my with my dogs and it and it's so true. <laughs> I give them a kiss on the head and that first kiss and just feeling as I'm doing it, I'm just sending them love and I get this, you know, eye contact that just I love you back. 
uh, and my heart just melts like crazy. And of course, then I have to kiss him a bunch more times. <laughs> um, but also, uh, Bailey, he likes, to, if I kiss him like that, he'll come and give me a hug. He puts his paws on my shoulders and hugs me. Um, Yogi, too, he kisses him on the head and he just Oh, and he's 110 pounds, but he just flops into my arms. He loves to give big hugs. And so I get this big bear hug off of him. And it's just the sweetest thing. So that two to five minutes now is just supercharged with this lovely, lovely energy. Uh, so try that with your pet and see what happens. It's just really wonderful uh, experience. And I, so I do it regularly. <laughs> I do it a couple times a day uh, just to experience that you know, that, that bond with them. And again, it's tuning everything out so that it's just focus energy one-on-one -on -one with your pet. And it is beneficial to them as well as to you. So please do try it at home. All right. So with that, if you have some issues with your pet and you know you're over that threshold or have any of those issues, then I suggest if you haven't worked with me before, let's I would go with my starter package so we can fully get into the issue and can give you lots of other modalities and ideas and thoughts and techniques to try and use to help the situation. Do lots of clearing on your pet and rebalancing their energy. And then you also get a 15 minute follow up session to continue that healing process, answer any questions you may have uh, seen after the first um, session, there's quite often lots of questions. So I, I, I package those two things, those two services together so that we can really get that healing moment, uh, energy moving forward and solve either the behavior problem or keep that, uh, if they're having physical issues, really get that physical energy moving and flowing for your pet. And future events. So next Saturday, I have a healing circle. Uh, we'll also have a healing circle right after this. If you want to stay on, you're welcome to stay on. And then next Wednesday is no webinar. It's just a healing circle at the same time, 6 p.m. And then um, uh, the following week uh, is an intuitive, the human version uh, uh, intuitive listening webinar. I don't have a topic just yet, but I'll let you know what as we get closer to that one. Uh, there won't be a healing circle on that first weekend in September, um, but we'll have more throughout September. So we'll give you more notice on what those are as we go. And for that, we'll go ahead and sign this off and we'll get into the demos. How did I do? Well, we went a little bit longer than I thought, but that's all right. We go, we'll go into our demos. So any questions before I, I start up the demos? No, okay. All righty, um, Kathy, if you can unmute and there, I have Trudy here. Picture of Trudy, cutie pie. So, what's going on with Trudy? Um, no, she's not my dog. She, she, we live in the same house. She's really Greg's dog. And um, I, you, you pretty much answered the question because sometimes I think she might not be feeling well after, you know, half a Big Mac and pepperoni pizza that she, she's fed. <laughs> Rather than, you know, puppy crunchies. Um, but she's generally happy and... Um, so are you just looking for a general clearing? Yeah, kind of just, I think she's, I think she's generally happy. She okay. seems to be, but I, I haven't had a dog in all for 50 years, so I don't really know. Okay. <laughs> you know, the eyes are the window to the soul, but they're also, right. don't lie. And so it, when, because again, animals are pretty, they're kind of hardwired to hide if they're not feeling well. Uh, so when they do show that they're not feeling well, then chances are they may have been not feeling well for a while because they don't, it, you know, their instinct is not, not to show that vulnerability because, you know, in the wild, that's the one that the predators take out are the ones that yeah. are vulnerable. So, um, 
but the eyes don't tend to lie. So if they're not feeling well, their eyes are kind of half masked and they just don't have their normal sparkle. So if you're seeing her kind of have that kind of look where there is like, like in the picture, she's pretty bright eyed, I would say. But if those eyes are just more withdrawn, um, then they're probably not feeling well. It, it was, it, the eyes are much more clear with the alpacas. They got those nice big eyes. Uh, <clears throat> but if they're not feeling well, that, that, that is the indicator that I look for. I like to put my eyes on, especially the alpacas every single day. Um, because that's right. true but it's true too with the dogs although the dogs are more <laughs> open about it <laughs> yogi uh, woke up the other night with an earache and he came running into the bedroom and jumping on the bed and <laughs> talking to me I, I, I got it. so he was not shy about it. <laughs> i don't feel good i got an earache <laughs> hold me <laughs> so 110 <laughs> going <laughs> i don't feel good bobby <laughs> uh but that's a, not always the norm <laughs> right so let's check in on trudy ah she seems very happy that you're there Says you got you give good pets, good good scratches. So we're just releasing a little discouragement. I'm gonna release that. A little taken for granted. So I'm gonna clear that. Worry. And I clear that. Mm. And some confusion. Not sure what the confusion is about. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Because I know what's gone on this summer with you guys. Uh, so it's not so much that she communicated it, but I, I think from just knowing with the fire situation and packing things up and worrying about whether you had to leave or not. I right. think energy up and the changes in the house of, you know, do we pack things up and take things away and what's going on with that? So I think that's where some of the worry and confusion came from. Um, and probably picking up your worry, of course, of what's going on and um, so, but that makes it confusing because, you know, I don't know why you should be so worried. <laughs> and it, am I, are we going away? Are we coming back? You know, it's just that kind of uncertainty that you had in the household. So, right. Uh, but that's over now, right? And you're in, hopefully no fires are going on anymore. Not, not nearby, no. So everything's more uh, stable. Just being home and your normal routine. And so just kind of asking if there's anything she'd like to share. Hmm. So she is telling, communicating something with smell. Is it something you like the smell of? It's probably a bear. She oh. got into a tangle with the bear yesterday. Oh, okay. So she's not allowed out quite like she used to be, you know. Okay, so you have to monitor. Definitely want to monitor that. Yeah, that could have been also some of that. Um, uh, picking up some defensiveness. So that would make sense and nervousness and worry. That could be also part of the worry is that there's just big, there is big things out there. Those are big dogs. <laughs> Silly dogs, yep, yep. Okay. Yeah. So a couple of things that she would be oh, concerned about with outside her control. 
but otherwise, yeah, she feels really pretty content. Um, and maybe just a little bit confused about that, disappointed too, because you know, she likes to go outside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not getting that freedom to go play and stuff. That's not fun. So right. uh, I don't know how you burn that exercise off. More toys in the house, maybe puzzles. Um, anything since she seems food motivated, you put pup some goodies in a, I do the muffin tin and tennis balls, hide the cookies under the tennis balls and she has to figure out how to get the tennis balls out to get to right. the, or box in a box in a box <laughs> type of things, anything like that. Or I, I take uh, also um, my uh, cottage cheese tubs or something, your yogurt tubs. And I put a couple of cookies under them and I turn them upside down. I have to figure out how to get those flipped over to get to the cookie. So little puzzles that work their brain. If you work their brain for 10, 15 minutes, it's like uh, 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 about a you know, half hour walk burns that off. If you can really get their mental stimulation going. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you. Oh, thank you. We watch out for the bears too. Yeah, I, you know, I can't take her out for a walk because we've got the bear in the backyard. So, <laughs> <laughs> bear spray. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Well, thank you, Kathy. And let's see, Jen and Braden, are you on? Um, yes, we're on. Is that an Aussie? He is an Aussie mix. This is this is before his gray hairs came in. He's thirteen now, <laughs> so he's I, a rescue. So it's a guess on the mix. Okay. Yeah, I have an Aussie as well. I'm kind of partial to them. <laughs> Can I help you with him? So he is, um, he's been painful in his back end and I feel heat on his back spine, like right before his hips. Um, and he does, I mean, being 13 years old, he has age, but I've had him x-rayed. We've done adequate shots um, and laser treatment and it's still, I don't know if there's something else there that we're not seeing. If there's another way I can help him, he's he's just really kind of dis uncomfortable. Okay. Well, let's clear some of the because they're definitely those are trapped emotions in there as well that can block your nat their natural flow, and so that can lead to the arthritis and the pain and the discomfort. So any of the trapped emotions that can help with the discomfort. So. Mm -hmm it would be after I clear in the next day or two does he is, is he more mobile um, when okay. you're with the elder pets then it's more about let's keep that stuff clear again that's that threshold we want to try and get it below that threshold we may not be able to get a whole lot of padding but as I clear uh, how much time do they seem to uh, handle you know their comfort level is maintained and then it starts getting achy again that will tell us, okay, time to do another little quick tune-up on them. So we go okay. more steps as opposed to, okay, we can really fix this and they're good to go for a while. We get more into, a, a, it's more of a maintenance at that point. So let's see, um, um, but when they clear, what you wanna see is some improvement. If the help, then, then we know that, yeah, the energy work is gonna be a benefit to him. Um, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I definitely am feeling it in his lower back and going down his sciatica. So uh, I'll also suggest uh, uh, another modality you can do for him, but I'll get that in a second. So I'm going to clear overwhelm. Oh, there we go. And already that was a huge release off of his spine, about mid spine discouragement clearing that his neck is pretty tight too vulnerability clearing that 
we've got another nice little little uh, release of energy, blocked energy, unsupported. Clearing that, and I'm starting to feel some energy flowing. So that's good. Abandonment. Clearing that. Yeah, so some of these emotions can have been stuck from long ago before you got them. Good, 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 good. And I don't know if you're able to see them, but when I do these releases, when you might see them uh, yawn, lick their lips, stretch, pass gas. <laughs> <laughs> Those are some of the normal signs when they start uh, relaxing. If they're laying down, they might stretch. They a lot of times go to sleep. Um, pee, releasing pee. Okay, so that's better. So um, I, I felt a little bit of nice movement and there's pelvis is right. The laser didn't help because the pelvis. Have you had him adjusted at all by a chiropractor? No, I have not. Well, that might help a little bit. Um, okay. Pelvis is slightly tilted. Um, and it may not, it might be so slight, it may not be seen very clearly on an x ray. Um, okay. That'd be enough that it could pinch on the nerves and be achy. So, but. What I would suggest you look up is a modality called T touch. And it's okay. CH two T's. And there's YouTubes on how to do dogs. And I would do these gentle, especially around this hip area if he'll let you, but down the spine, also out. So anywhere he likes it. But what you, what that will do is help keep that energy flow. I'm getting the chills. I'm telling you the right thing. So. <laughs> And it's something you can do regularly. And with these elder guys too, you know, it's like us, any of us that are get aches and pains, if we lay down for too long or stay in one spot, when we get up, it's like, oi, oi, right, achy. And yeah. uh, that's like that for these older guys. And so being able to do that regular tea touch to keep that natural energy flow going regularly, that will do wonders. Uh, it really helps. And it, if you've ever if tried on yourself, especially if you have a, any ache or pain, and you'll see that it really helps take take it down a notch or two. Um, okay. It's very effective little tool, and it also just feels good and it's calming and quieting and very helpful. Okay, um, thanks. I like to give you guys something that you can do yourself as well as but we definitely need to keep those trapped emotions clear. So again, see, we want to see some improvement. If you, I don't know how much improvement you will get, but hopefully you will get some. From myself, it seems like you should have a little bit better mobility. Okay. Uh, you may, or it, it can happen even right away. Um, and then, but I don't know and where my intuition doesn't work is how long it will last. And, but that information is really beneficial to me. And that's why I like doing that 45 minute and then the 50 minute follow-up sure, yeah. back into 15 minute sessions is because that, that next session, after we do the first one, that follow-up session tells me where I'm, where we're at with that threshold. So yeah. we, oh, are we right there at the threshold? Do we give it, get some padding? Oh yeah, he did great for like two weeks. Oh, that's good information. Now I know that we got some nice padding. Oh, he was only good. He was good for a day or two. Okay, then that means we're right at that threshold. So you see okay. that it's really important. And I, see, I suspect strongly we're just going to need, a, and with the animals, 15 minutes, I can clear a whole lot. I can do a couple animals in that 15 minutes. Time. They don't have a long attention span. It's just about uh, clearing that out and helping them just get that energy flowing and rebalancing. They don't need coaching. <laughs> they, <laughs> All right. they just want to get back to motions. <laughs> okay. Well, great. Thank you. I'll follow up with an appointment. Okay.
Great, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Go to my website, yourenergyhealer.com and go to the animal services section. Okay, uh, let's see, we got a little bit more time. Um, uh, Jan. Are you on Jan? Yeah, you're still there. Good. There I am. I tried to <laughs> mute the mute is okay. Yeah, so I got Bianca. Right. Um, I've only had her for um, a couple of weeks. She came in to rescue. Um, she came from a place. I'm I don't know, I'm in Wisconsin. I don't know where anybody else is, but um, she came from Alabama, um, along with four other St. Bernards that were just like left neglected. Um, she, she was in a shelter for a short period of time and then the rescue took them in. Um, she was in a foster home for a week and then I got her, it was right after, right after my Bella, um, my saint died. And I guess I was supposed to, it just meant I was supposed to take her in, but she is so afraid of everything. She's just, I mean, we don't know really what they went through, what they went through, but She's just so afraid of everything, especially when I have to take her to the vet's office. They haven't been able to draw blood yet because she just goes berserk if anybody tries to, you know, like hug her or, you know, constrict her at all. Okay. Um, so again, I would look up the same thing. Look up those tea touches. Uh, okay. Get her comfortable. Again, go to where she's comfortable with the touches and, and then build to it. Uh, I'm kind of doing the same. He's not fearful so much, but my youngest doesn't like his feet touched at all. And so I'm working with the doing the tea touches, getting him comfortable uh, with his feet being touched. Uh, and and so the tea touches, he's, he's like, oh, that doesn't feel so bad. So we can slowly get him comfortable with the tea touches. But it, it's building oh, uh, with that. I was just going to say, I was just going to say, I have been practicing with her. I've had, I've been able to um, clip her nails oh, one, one at a time, you know, like one, a little bit at a time. Yeah. <laughs> um, she, she's very, I can't get them completely done, but I've been slowly during this period of time, you know, little by little by little, like, you know. And any rewards, lots of praise. And I don't know if she's food motivated. She does look like she's on the thin side from the yeah, picture. She's, she's inside she only weighs about 80 pounds she had she barely was eating the first week um she's getting better at that i've been trying different things with her okay yeah yeah so the tea touch um anything like that and it's just it's about giving her time and this is one thing where you just kind of have to be patient and build the trust even though you know that she probably needs the vet but it, you you it, she doesn't have, to me, it's like having a bank account with somebody, these relationships with these animals. And in her case, you, it's in the red, you know, there is nothing there because right. she had any good experiences with humans yet. And there's a lot of confusion and changes and she doesn't know what the heck's going on. So I'm, and is, is she just going to be fostered by you? Because I won't tell them it's a forever home unless it's a true statement. Uh, but at at this point, I, I really don't know. I have to say, I don't know. I'm, I'm caring for her as long as she needs, um, okay. you know, to settle. Good. Okay. So that's, that's just good in, information that she's, I'm going to just communicate to her. She's in a loving home where she's going to be safe and well taken care of and just leave it at that. Okay. I won't tell her it's a forever home. Yeah, I've been, I've been trying to do everything. I've been taking her for a ride in the car, taking her to the groomer, although we're not doing grooming yet. We're just you know, introducing and being there. Um, same thing with the vet's office. I've taken her a couple of times, well, several times actually to the vet just to walk around in the, you know, in the waiting room and see people and see dogs. And, you know, it's like, okay, now we can go home now, you know, and then you get a treat. Okay. You know, just to be exposed to things. So. Okay. Uh, and will she take the treat there? Um, not always. No. Okay. Let me tap in and just see what we got going here, man. Yeah, a lot of fear, a lot of trauma, big distortion in the first chakra. So let me clear trauma. 
Okay, so when you start doing the T touches with her, if she'll let you, you can. I always like to start where they like it the best. But uh, at the base of her tail is the root chakra. And you want to try and boost that energy there. So T touches at the base of the tail, right? So like the, you're saying at the like at the end of her her spine before the tail starts where it's attached up at the top, right? Yep, that's the root chakra. And so that is there's a big distortion there, and it makes sense because she wasn't well cared for. You know, yeah. so she doesn't have that tribe or you know there just wasn't that loving supportive environment until now so there's a big distortion there so doing the tea touches rebuilds that safety that place that you they would feel safe and secure okay. you just kind of again do the breathing do your slow breathing picture love love or above and just do gentle tea touches real light it's a super light touch and they're just doing uh, I would do it all wherever again she likes, but especially at that root chakra area. And I'm going to clear as much as I can out in one setting. Lots of confusions. Clear some of that. Uh, as you probably don't know, it feels like she was chained. I don't know if there's any scarring around her neck. Is she sensitive around her neck? She seems like I can pet, you know, I can pet her ears and, and pet her head down to the neck. It doesn't seem like there's any sensitivity. Okay, good, good. So that didn't cause trauma there. Um, it's really, I'm what? sorry, it's really, it's really funny because when she, she has a collar on, just a, you know, a flat collar, um, and when you put a leash on her, she actually... I've had more experiences where the dogs, the big dogs especially, will pull and, you know, want to, to take you places, but she actually will almost walk side alongside of me or a little bit behind me and not pull on the leash at all, which is kind of strange. Okay, so maybe she did get some training on that, or she just feels more secure, you know, Sometimes there is a sense of security in being leashed, especially when they don't know what the heck's going on. Because if you're the leader, if, if they're depending on you and looking to you, uh, to knowing what's going on, that leash is a two-way communication device. So now they can be less stressed out to trying to figure out what the heck's going on and where we're going, because I can just follow you. Okay, yeah, that, that makes sense. She seems to be afraid of a lot of different noises, like even she'll see some little child on a bike or on a scooter or something, and she stops and like, what, you know, like, what's that? Yeah, she just hasn't been exposed to a whole lot of the world. So everything is scary and overwhelming. I'm going to clear overwhelm. And that too, um, it, it feels like there is a sense of curiosity, even though there's fear. Uh, once she kind of realizes that maybe it's not going to hurt her, it's not so scary. So given patience and exposure, uh, it's, it, I think it's being effective in helping to build her confidence. She just lacks in confidence. So I'm also clearing unworthy. Oh, okay. Uh, so <laughs> I think she's pretty intuitive. Um, so, but she doesn't understand a lot of the English language. <laughs> uh, so I would think to her what you're going to do. Picture it ahead of time. Oh, going okay. to, uh, like if you're going to work on her feet, just picture, okay, time to do foot. And, and then put it on an actual verbal outside voice cue as well. Uh, so she just kind of needs to know what the heck's going on. So picturing it first in your mind, and then you can add a verbal cue. She's pretty smart, I think. It feels like she's not. She's pretty bright. Uh, that if you kind of just tell her what's going on, that will help ease some of the fear. And then the consistency of it all. Uh, 
will help calm her down. But okay. if she's trying to figure it all out, she's in hyper vigilant and she's trying to figure everything out and it's just being bombarded with a lot of sensory input that she's trying to process. So doing little things, little short stuff, uh, you know, especially when you're in a quiet state and you're just trying to work with her feet or something like that, picture it first and then, you know, do foot, foot, foot and, you know, just like do the pee touches to the foot first and then maybe playing with her toes and then maybe doing a nail and okay. then you can build up to it and you'll she'll learn she'll 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 learn and and they when we do it that way when we actually communicate the way they communicate it builds that trust and that's what she's right now she, she's okay really trust. Yeah. okay i've been trying as i said you know little by little just been exposing her to things for a short periods of time and do it again and then you know a different day and do it again and okay yeah. it's, it's all a puzzle and then reading her too so if she it, it's a real balancing act that you want to maybe push her a little bit but not too hard okay you know, balancing act of giving her and giving her breaks because all of these experiences are really overwhelming <laughs> they're new and i don't know what's going on and i don't know if i trust anybody here so she's learning to trust you that nothing bad's happening when you go do these things. And that, again, putting in, you think about every time you do something, is it putting it a deposit in or taking a, out a withdrawal? And we want a lot more deposits than withdrawals. So it's also reading her body language that, okay, she's maybe getting, a, this might be a little too hard this time. That's far enough. If it's, you want to expose her and not just, feed into her fear and go, okay, I'm not going to do anything with her, but okay, it looks like she's done. <laughs> yeah. This is where I would love to teach you. You can ask her and by teaching you a little basic animal communication. You can ask her, you know, are you ready to go to the next step? Nope. <laughs> okay. Give, I'll give you a little more second just to kind of look around and check things out. Now, are you ready? And then you can ask yes and no questions and she'll tell you, yes, I'm ready. <laughs> and now you yeah really getting connected with her so I can teach you that really fast if you ever want to have a session um, oh. and you can re and it, again it builds the trust and you're intuitively communicating but you're listening to her and I tell you I call myself an animal listener because I rather listen to them than just tell them what I want them to do so I'm listening to them going that's as far as I think they can go today it's like okay and tomorrow's another day or we'll try again and do a little bit more later and you're going to explain at the end kind of how to how to um, make an appointment with you or how to go about that? Sure. I, uh, yes, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> I'll, I'll type, type it in the chat box here. Uh, you can go, go to my website here. Oops. Dot your energy healer dot com. That's my website, yourenergyhealer.com and go to the animal services page. And I would suggest the starter package because that'll take the 45 minutes to explain how to do that simple technique on how to uh, connect with them and how to ask a simple yes and no question and get an answer. Uh, and if you go to that starter package and purchase that, um, and then uh, you get a link to my calendar, give me your, and you type in your phone number and I call you at that time. Uh, that you select for your appointment. Super easy. Okay. All right, great. Uh, and so Kathy talked about some music, music out there that's geared towards animals, uh, dogs and cats that can help calm, calm our pets down. Uh, there's also buy some essential oils for general stuff, but when you're doing a specific task like that, then, then your tea touches and communicating with them is your, your best tool. But she said, Cindy, yeah. did you get my pick, my dog that I sent? I did. So we'll okay. do that right now. You're next. Oh, are you sure? Because it's 10 o'clock already. Uh, is it? Uh, it's Missy. I've done it before with her. Check she it. She passed away, and I don't know if it's too late for you to pick up anything from her. It might be too. She might be gone. Uh, so, oh, did she just passed away, or yeah, like a week ago, about. Okay, no problem. 
<clears throat> no, I've checked on animals in the past 20 years ago. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> Time doesn't matter when it's on the other side. <laughs> oh, good. They don't have a clock anymore or a calendar. Okay, she is on the other side. She made a change. She found her way to the light. So that's good. We miss you. Yeah, that's a good sign. Um, so yeah, well, she's definitely free. Anxiety and pain, emotional pain, especially. It's just the, she's just free. This, this was hard. She said that it was brutal. That's the word she used. So she's free of all that. She appreciates the, how hard you tried <laughs> with her. But yeah, this, there was just no picking this life. Oh, and she's saying she's going to stay there for a while. She's not ready to come into a, another body and life. She doesn't trust it here. And she doesn't want to go through that again. So she needs time. It's healing. It's going to take her some time of healing. And it's just that pure energy. But she's playing and or kind of racing about, running about. Feeling better emotionally? Oh, yeah. All that is gone other than healing. But... She remembers what happened in this life, which was very hard. She's just not anxious to go come back. <laughs> I wouldn't want to either. Yeah. Yeah, this was a very, very hard life. I'm going to ask her if there any other hard lives. Okay, so I asked her if she had other lives, um, and she said yes, but this is the hardest. Really, really. You're you're cutting in and out a little bit. Uh, I said, I asked her if she past lives. Um, let me mute you for a second. Oh, okay. That might be it. Um. So, uh, in her past lives, I asked if she had other hard lives and she said yes but this was the hardest and so that this that she just needs time and she's I'm not quite sure what her contract was does she know oh it got derailed she said she was supposed to do something else with some other people and somehow it got screwed up So she really wasn't supposed to be with you. It was supposed to have a different, different life happen. And I don't know what it was that got her derailed where she was supposed to have a different interaction with somebody that was supposed to have a better, <laughs> better life for both. But I think they were still supposed to be challenging, but not as challenging as this turned out. Oh, sorry. Yogi's barking. Uh, but she's healing, she's healing. So I'm gonna mute myself here for a second. I'm gonna stop the recording.